Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic sulfur and its compounds. So initially we looked at uh, sulfur oxide and we looked at how it's prepared in the laboratory. So for this lesson we are going to look at the properties of sulfur oxide and then you'll get a chance also to look at a few questions. So some of the physical properties of sulfur oxide is that it has a pungent characteristic smell and the fact that it has this characteristic uh, irritating smell is because of the acidic acidity or the acidic property of sulfur oxide. It does not support combustion, neither does it burn. So when a lighted splint is introduced in a jar full of sulfur oxide, the splint is extinguished. It has a very low pH. This tells us that it is acidic in nature. It is very dense in air. Um, it is two times denser than air. That's the reason why we collect it by downward delivery. And then it's very soluble in water. If you put one drop of water in sulfur oxide, it, it dissolves to leave a vacuum. And then if it leaves a vacuum because of the atmospheric pressure, water is pushed upwards the tube and then it comes out like a, like a fountain. This is the same experiment we saw also with ammonia. Uh, so the water rises to occupy the vacuum or the space that has been left. So when the sulfur oxide dissolves in water, it forms uh, sulfurous acid. You're going to look at the different acids that are formed between reaction of sulfur oxide and reaction of sulfur six oxide. So sulfur oxide will react to form sulfurous. You can see it's not the normal sulfuric acid, H2, SO4. So this is referred to as sulfurous acid or sulfuric four acid. And some of the chemical properties are, it is a very strong reducing agent. Uh, so a pure solution of sulfur four oxide and sulfurous acid are usually a very strong reducing agent. So what happens is the sulfate, sulfite uh, radical acts as a supply of electrons. This means that it loses electrons. And as you can see from the ionic equation, you can see sulfurous acid or sulfuric acid dissociates in water or dissociates to form two hydrogen ions and sulfate ions. Then these sulfate ions further react with water to form sulfate. These are sulfate ions to form sulfate and two hydrogen ions and in return, there are two electrons that are lost. So if you look at this process where we are losing electrons, it's oxidation. So these are the electrons that are gained by the oxidizing agent. So we say that the sulfur four, sulfur four oxide or the, sulf, the sulfite ions in sulfurous acid lose the electrons or undergo oxidation. And then in turn, they are reduced, as you can see. So the oxidizing agent accepts the, the electrons and then that causes the sulfate, sulfite ions to be reduced. So an example of how sulfur oxide acts as a reducing agent is a reaction of acidified potassium to minus seven. As you can see from the image, it's purple in color. What happens if you bubble sulfur oxide in this acidified potassium permanganate? It turns to a, a colorless solution. It turns from purple to colorless. Uh, the reason why that happens is because the purple manganese two, uh, 7 ions are reduced to manganese 2 ions, while the sulfurous acid, as we said, is reduced to sulfate ions and water. So this is the equation. You can see we start with sulfur four oxide. You know it's going to dissolve in water to form sulfurous acid. And then this um, sulfurous acid forms the sulfite as, um, ions, which lose electrons to form the sulfate ions, as you can see. So we are moving from potassium manganate 7 to manganese 2. You can see it is being reduced. And then the sulfur 4 oxide, it is um, uh, reduced to sulfuric acid. So when you look at the ionic equation, we are moving from manganese 7 to manganese 2. And then sulfate uh, is um, 
are reduced to uh, sulfate ions. So this is the reduction. So the manganese is being reduced to manganese 2 plus. So you can see now there are loss of electrons. The sulfate ions are losing electrons that are going the process of oxidation. That means the potassium permanganate 7 are going through the process of reduction. So note there is a difference between the process. So the, sulf the sulfite ions are undergoing oxidation. So and then the mangan manganese ions, manganese 7 ions are undergoing reduction. So when the sulfate, sulfite ions undergo oxidation or loss of electrons, they form uh, sulfite ions. And then when manganese 7 ions uh, undergo reduction, they form manganese 2 ions. So that is what is happening. So the sulfite ions are reducing agent. And then the manganese um, 7 ions or potassium permanganate is oxidizing agent. So in the next... Uh, process is the reduction of potassium dichromate 6 as well. It's usually um, yellow in color so or orange. So what happens is acidified potassium dichromate, it changes from orange to green. These colors are important, especially when you ask for the observation. So you can see we have the orange. Sometimes it might look or uh, yellow because of the dilution, but it is orange in color. It changes to green when you bubble uh, sulfur four oxide. So the dichromate, um, you can see the dichromate uh, six ions are undergoing reduction to chromate three ions, and then sulfite ions are undergoing oxidation to sulf sulfate ions. So you can you know that they are losing electrons, which are gained by the chromium ions. That's the reason why they undergo um, the oxidation, and then the chromium ions undergo reduction. So there is also the reduction of ion 3 ions to ion 2 ions. So when you look at the ion 3 ions and you bubble some sulfur oxide in the solution, it is going to change from brown, which is the ion 3, to green, which is the ion 2. So it means sulfur oxide reduces the ion 3 ions, which is are in ion 3 chloride, uh, to, form the, to form the green ion 2 chloride. So the color changes from brown to green, as you can see from the diagram. So we start with a brown ion 3 ions, and then we end up with green ion 2 ions. So you can see sulfite ions are losing electrons, which are gained by the ion 3 ions to form sulfate ions and then the ion 3 ions are reduced to ion 2 ions. It also causes the reduction of bromine water. Bromine water you can see it's yellow. So when you bubble sulfur oxide it turns to a colorless solution. So that are some of the observations that you see. So it changes from red brown so it sometimes it can be yellow in color depending on the concentration of the bromine solution. So brom bromine changes to the hydrogen bromide. It changes color from red brown to colorless. So it undergoes reduction while the sulfite ions undergoes oxidation to form sulfate ions. So on addition, if we were to add barium chloride in this reaction, remember this reaction we have the sulfate the sulfate ions. What would happen there? Our white precipitate would be formed. And this precipitate is because of the presence of the insoluble barium sulfate. Because remember, we have the sulfate ions in solution. So barium ions will react to the sulfate ions in solution to form barium sulfate. And this is one of the tests that determines the presence of sulfate ions. When we come to qualitative analysis, we are going to talk about barium chloride or barium nitrate. We would use those as alternatives. So for carbonate and sulfate, they also form white precipitate with barium chloride, but the precipitate does not dissolve in hydrochloric acid. But we will come to qualitative analysis, but it is good that you have you remember this before we get there. It also reduces hydrogen peroxide. So you are going to see some bubbles of colorless gas, and this colorless gas relies a glowing splint that tells you that it is oxygen. So the sulfurous acid is oxidized to sulf sulfuric acid or the sulfate sulfite ions are oxidized to sulfate ions as you can see in the equation. And then the hydrogen peroxide is broken down to form water and oxygen.
So if you were to add barium chloride in this uh, reaction, what would happen is that the barium ions are going to react with the sulfate ions to form barium sulfate once again, and this is a white precipitate. And this will confirm for us that the ions that are present are sulfate ions. So it also causes the reduction of concentrated nitric uh, uh, 5 acid. So if you bubble sulfur 4 oxide in a solution containing nitric 5 acid, you notice you're going to see some brown fumes of nitrogen 4 oxide. This is because alpha 4 oxide reduces nitric 5 acid to nitric 4, nitrogen 4 oxide, which is brown, and then itself is oxidized to form sulfate ions. So the sulfur 4 oxide is a reducing agent while the nitric acid is an oxidizing agent. Remember, we said even before in nitrogen and its compounds that nitric acid is one of the most oxidizing acids. It's one of the oxidizing acids. So nitric acid is oxidized by sulfur 4 oxide. Uh, to form nitrogen four oxide and sulfuric acid is formed. And you can notice sulfuric acid, sulfuric six acid, not sulfurous acid. So let's do uh, one question. What would be observed if sulfur four oxide is bubbled through acidified potassium permanganate? So we are going to say purple, as, uh, potassium permanganate will turn to colorless. So you have only been told to what would be observed. You haven't been told to mention why. And then outline the physical properties of sulfur four oxide. So it is acidic in nature. We know that it has an irritating smell. And then we know it's denser than air. and it's very soluble in water. So those are some of the properties of sulfur oxide, although we also discussed a bit more. So that brings us to the end. So in the next lesson, you're going to continue with the properties of sulfur oxide. In this case, we talked about its reducing property. So in the next session, you're going to look at its oxidizing property. So see you in the next lesson.